from sleeping in cars, using newspapers, toilet paper, and now Lamont Peterson is a champion as we go to the tail of the tape for tonight's main event. Well, in the boxing numbers, or at least the numbers of their physique, clearly the height and reach advantage for Peterson is important if he's going to box in this fight, and he really wants to do it. Notice that Peterson came in at 141 pounds. Because of some issues with the sanctioning bodies, no title is on the line, so it was a 140-pound limit. It's above the junior welterweight limit. And the unified rules in this fight. As we go to the New Jersey rules, there is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If a fighter cannot continue due to an injury from an accidental foul before the completion of six rounds, the fight is a no decision. After six full rounds, they will go to the scorecards for a technical decision. And now for the official introductions for this feature attraction, once again, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to Boardwalk Hall here in Atlantic City, New Jersey for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Golden Boy Promotions and Showtime. Sponsored by Caesars Atlantic City, Corona, La Cerveza, Masfina, and AT&T, Piensa Sin Limites. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, the Commissioner Aaron Davis. Introducing you are three judges scoring from ringside, all from the state of New Jersey. We have Henry Grant, Barbara Perez, and Luis Rivera. Introducing our third man of the ring, the referee in charge. He will be giving instructions after the introductions, Steve Smoker. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled in a welterweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Atlantic City, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with white trim, hailing from Trelu Chebut, Argentina. He weighed in at a ready 140 pounds even, with a record of 33 wins, two losses, and one no decision. He has 31 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting WBC interim super lightweight world champion, introducing La Máquina Argentina, Lucas Martín Matisse. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing purple trunks with silver trim, hailing from our nation's capital of Washington, D.C. He weighed in at 141 pounds. His record stands at 31 wins, one loss and one draw, with 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the former WBA world champion and the current IBF junior welterweight champion of the world. Instructions, Steve Smoker. Lucas. We went over the rules in the dressing room. Lucas and Tiana. Ready to go? Yep. T touch up. Toca la mano. Toca la mano. Gracias a Dios. Gracias a Dios. Referee Steve Smoger with the last-minute instructions. Bye. From the Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey, we are Luisito. set for the main event. Lamont Peterson Louis. and Lucas Louis. Matisse. With apologies to the band Kiss, you one of the best. You are getting two of the very best at 140 pounds with a potential super fight against Danny Garcia at stake. No titles on the line in this one. It's all about pride. It's all about showcasing their will and skill. And we are underway. Lucas Matisse in the black with white. 
Lamont Peterson in the purple with silver. Peterson and his trainer Barry Hunter said very clearly, we are going to be cerebral, we're going to box, we're not going to stand in front of Lucas Matisse. He's starting out the fight just that way. Well, that was the, the big question because Peterson had taken a very aggressive approach in his last few fights, but I think anybody that takes an aggressive approach against Lucas Matisse would have to be crazy, so yes. naturally Peterson coming to box tonight. That would be insane. Yeah. <laughs> Even for the toughest of guys. Yes. Both have a reputation as being a slow starters. In fact, in Peterson's last bout after a 14-month layoff against Kendall Holt, the first three rounds were Kendall Holtz, and then he got the engine warmed up and finished the former world champion. Matisse, after the losses, saying that he needed to get off to faster starts, beat Humberto Soto in five and then destroyed Mike Dallas Jr. in one. And Maurice Jones drew NFL player expecting what we are all expecting, an electrifying fight here tonight. Early in this match, we're seeing that the height and reach of Peterson can be a very effective tool. And boxing behind those legs, too. Making sure he keeps that distance. Of course, it's so early in this fight. And Matisse himself still getting that right hand, trying to find the range for it. Of course, if you talk to Matisse's camp, they will say that Matisse is an underrated boxer, known for his power in brawling, but Al, you, yes. you give it the stamp of your approval. And I think that he has gotten better since those losses, though I thought he won them against Judah and Alexander. Still is a little bit flat-footed, so Peterson yeah. does have the advantage if he can use that foot speed. No question. And one thing I'm noticing here is Matisse, although he wants to track down Peterson, is not cutting the ring off. No, so, you're absolutely right. So Peterson is able to use the ring right now pretty comfortably. Under a minute remaining in the opening round. Peterson going side to side. Matisse step, clinches. Step, 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 step. Good, thank you. When he fought Tim Bradley, and we had it on Showtime, Lamont Peterson got kind of caught up in battling with Bradley, fighting his fight, not doing that so far. It's been the Lamont Peterson Invitational Track Meet in round one. Under 30 seconds left in the opening frame. A jab from Peterson. So to show you the dimensions Lamont Peterson has, though. He's been very aggressive in his past few fights, and, and he's been successful with that style. But here, boxing takes a good hook here. But Left hook by Matisse with under 10 seconds remaining. The 127th pro round for Matisse. The 211th pro round for Peterson is in the books. Let's go to the keys to victory. For Lamont Peterson, as we said, he can't stand in front of Matisse. Has to use angles. And he's got to throw a lot of punches, I think, because Matisse can be frozen by combinations. We didn't see much of that in the first round. And against Matisse, who attacks sometimes with wide punches, you've got to counter effectively. For Lucas Matisse, when he jabs his way in, it really helps him set up that right hand. He hasn't been able to get that punch going yet. And he's a terrific body puncher. He's thrown some left hooks to the body so far, trying to slow the movement of Peterson. The Matisse right, one of the most powerful punches in boxing, and he'll throw it often in this fight. Danny Garcia watching with vested interest. He may, in fact, be... The man, the winner of this fight, will face in an unofficial 140-pound tournament here on Showtime Championship Boxing as round two gets underway. Matisse, known for his potent power, 27 of his 31 KOs have occurred inside four rounds. He has never been down as a professional, while Peterson has been down three times thus far in his career. You know, they I scored that round even, a draw, and I'll tell you what, they both landed exactly seven punches in that round, though Peterson threw 11 more. I don't know, man. The only, the only punch I saw Matisse land was that left hook. Well, he landed two or three at the end, and he landed some body punches as well. And there you see the, the total punches uh, uh, that were uh, landed there. That's the power. Uh, yeah, those are the punches that they landed in the last round. Matisse stepping up the aggression this round, being a bit more physical. This is what you do to a guy who's trying to box you. you basically, when you're trying to corner him down, you get rough with him, you try to frustrate him so that he gets away from his own game plan of boxing. Of course, Peterson with the reach advantage wants to establish that jab. 
But Matisse able to close the gap and use those short punches as they clinch. And Steve Smoger allowing them to try to fight up, but now calling for the break. Now, Steve Smoger's a referee that allows you to fight. And now Peterson is now closing the distance himself. This is this is where Matisse wants him. And this is what I was talking about with Matisse getting aggressive and being rough and dirty a little bit on the inside. It may make somebody like Peterson lose track of the game plan and stay in front of him. Matisse definitely putting the pedal to the metal here in round two and getting a little wild with some of those punches. And, you know, so far, the left took of Matisse, which is a good punch. It's not as good as his right hand, so it gets over Shadow. Has been very good to the body and the head. Just misses with that sweeping left hook, does Matisse, with a minute remaining in the second round. Straight right hand there. The jab sticks by Matisse. That right hand wasn't the best one Matisse can land, and it had an impact on Lamont Peterson. This guy still had a hand in Straight right hand from Matisse, the orthodox fighter, of course. 45 seconds left in the round. Peterson backing up, trying to keep him at bay with the jab. And there he trips. So a left hook landed by Matisse, and that drops. Peterson for the fourth time in his career. A delayed reaction there. Let's see now how Peterson gets out of the round. I said that left hook was a tough one. He was down twice against Victor Ortiz and once against Timothy Bradley and now has been down here in the second round and Matisse putting the pressure on Lamont Peterson as we go to round three. We talk a lot about the right hand of Lucas Matisse, but as I said, he was getting the left hook in as well. This is a punch that goes off the top of his forehead. He doesn't have to land perfectly, Matisse. He's got such power, Pauly. And I'll tell, I'll tell you what, it was the right hand that set up that left hand, that left hand. He makes Peterson go towards the left hook, see? Mm -hmm. He makes Peterson defend towards the other side where he can bring him to that left hook. And we take one more look at what Pauly was talking about. The right had been thrown to the body. That's a very wide left hook, but it still got there, and he is so heavy-handed that even that kind of left hook is going to have an impact. And it got there because the way he threw the right hand, Peterson went towards the direction of the hook. So Peterson down for the fourth time in his career. In round two, we begin round three. Lucas Matisse continuing here as Peterson gets rocked again with that right hand, and there Matisse slips. And to be honest with you, why I had the delayed call, I thought that Peterson yeah. had tripped over the ropes of that it last that round. Way. That knockdown, well, oh, here comes Matisse battling away on the inside. That knockdown was the 22nd knockdown that he has had in his last of 12 fights. Matisse, man, he knocks people down. An astronomical number in a super stat courtesy of the Hall of Famer Al Bernstein. <laughs> and a right uppercut lands by Peterson digging away at the body. And now a rough and tumble affair materializing here in round three. As we look at the power punches throughout this fight, it's Matisse with a huge advantage. Yeah, and his punches are so much more damaging. Now Peterson's in a, a firefight fight with him. Yeah, he just get, he's, you know, he said, you know what, forget boxing. Yeah. I might be safer in close range. And yeah. this is where, but this is not. We know what uh, Peterson is about. He's a boxer, but then can be lulled into a brawl. And against Matisse, that could be very dangerous indeed. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, Mauro, on the inside, if Peterson can smother Matisse's work, he may be able to work that body and work those combinations. Good point. He's got to be careful. Matisse's headhunting with the right hand. There's a left hook from Peterson. The problem with all that is that Matisse has a better has a better chin than Lamont Peterson. That's the problem. But here's the thing, Alan. Again, I'll disagree with you slightly. Okay. He does have a better. He does have a better chin. I'll agree with you there. But the, here's the thing: if you're going to run away from him and he's still going to catch up to you, you might as well try to fight him off and see if you can gain his respect back. All right, you won me over. <laughs> but I'll agree with you. Matisse has the better chin. <laughs> Time. 
Matisse detonated that left hook and for the second time of the round, third time of the fight, it's been waved off. Matisse with his 32nd knockout win in 34 victories. The highest KO percentage in boxing. And guess who is ready for him? Danny Garcia saying, that's okay, I'm number one, bring it on. the best knockout percentage in boxing today among active fighters, and there's a reason for that. After one round of boxing, Peterson just couldn't handle him anymore. And here, we talk about the right hand, he did most of this with the left hook. So much for jet lag, huh? Yes, yes. good point. We'll take a look at the first knockdown in this second round. And Matisse, with a beautiful, short, compact left hook, not even of the wider variety. And when a fighter's in front of him, he can get both the right and left hand off. And, and we get a look, yet another look at the first knockdown here. And you know what? He, it's a very short, compact punch, Paulie. Yeah, they both hook at the same time. You don't hook with a hooker. They hook at the same time, but we saw who the hooker is. Yeah, we're, the, the right hand was such a worry to Peterson and Barry Hunter, and they told us for the fight, that right hand is what we got to worry about. Well, it was the hook all night that did it. And then as we look at the second, uh, when the fight was stopped, again, it was the left hook. Well, the right, good right hand lands, but there's the hook that does the real damage. So Matisse found another weapon that worked for him and showed a different dimension, but he has power. Scary, man. It's scary. This guy, every time he touches your chin, he hurts you. And here's a final look at the final flurry. Misses those two shots, but catches Lamont on the end, the tail end of the left hook, and down he goes. And that was all she wrote. I mean, this guy, it's literally like a bomb explodes every time he lands a punch. Lucas the Machine Matisse serving notice that he is indeed one of the biggest forces in boxing. He's got lethal punching power. He's ready for the best in the division. Danny Garcia, unified 140-pound champion. Matisse has been an interim champion. He wants the real gold, and he has his sights set on that man, Philadelphia's own, as we look at the final numbers of another impressive stoppage by Matisse. Well, the power punches, he landed, 30, uh, he landed uh, 38%, but that doesn't even tell the whole story, because of those 38%, they were so powerful that almost every one of them, as Paul pointed out hurt Peterson and Peterson was not able to really be effective with his jab in keeping him at bay and uh, the most important thing about those numbers is there was power behind those power punches the left hook closes the book on another chapter in what is shaping up to be a scintillating career let's go to Jimmy Lennon jr. for the official decision Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes, 14 seconds in round number 3. Our referee in charge, Steve Smoker, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout, La Gran Máquina Argentina, Lucas Lucas Matisse serving up the fistic fireworks that most boxing fans have come to expect from the machine. He was firing in all cylinders tonight, and I know fans are salivating at the prospects of a showdown with that man, Danny Garcia. Let's go to Jim Gray, who's standing by with Lamont Peterson. Morrow, thank you very much. Lamont, are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I feel good. Uh, nothing physically wrong with me right now. Of course, I'm upset that I lost, but uh, so far, I feel, you know, I feel good. At this point, are you able to assess what happened here with the three knockdowns? Uh, yeah, uh, I think I got a little lazy with the jab, uh, started relaxing a little bit, hit me with a good shot. I remember him hitting me in the back of my head, and I was trying to tell the ref that, you know, he was hitting the back of the head. kind of made me a little dizzy. And uh, but you know, as we went on, he hit me with a good shot and hurt me. And uh, 
I guess he just finished the job. Were you ever able to recover from this first knockdown where he caught you with that left hook in a second round and that was your first knockdown. Did you feel as though you were able to recover and could you come back from that? Yeah I recovered from that first knockdown and uh, I was I was okay for a while and then uh, eventually he hit me again and he hurt me again and uh, I still I, I felt as though I could have fought through it but the ref did it you know right thing and by stopping the fight. And that was the second knockdown. That was the first knockdown in the second, in the third round, the second knockdown in the fight. Lamont, was he simply just a better fighter? Uh, I guess tonight he was. You know, he won the fight. Fans, I have no complaints. Uh, you know, he's a good fighter. Appreciate your time. Hope right. you're feeling okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Lucas, congratulations to you. Let me say first something. Richard we have We have a new Manny Pacquiao. He's from Argentina, and his name is Lucas the Machine. Matisse. Did you understand that? <laughs> Entendiste eso, lo que te dijo Richard? No, pero me sé que algo bueno. <laughs> he said that it's something good. He didn't understand it, but he knows it's something good. Lucas, uh, in the first round, it seemed as though Lamont was going to be backing away the entire fight and being able to get away from your power. How did you manage to turn this into the fight that you wanted and connect with that punch to knock him down in the second round? Parecía que en el primer round Lamont eh, como que estaba equivando y estaba eh, no recibiendo ese golpe que tú le ibas a dar. ¿Qué tú tuviste que hacer para cambiar eso? Eh, no, bueno, como siempre, el primer round siempre cuesta. Eh, la verdad que se movía bien, eh, me dejaba fuera de distancia. Eh, pero bueno, cuando empecé a, a conectarlo en el, en el segundo round sabía que yeah, the first round was kind of, he was trying to find out what he was going to bring to the fight. And then uh, after the second round, he started connecting with more force. What enabled you to do what so many have not been able to do against Peterson and, and uncover it so quickly? ¿Por qué muchos no han podido con Peterson? ¿Qué fue lo que pudiste hacer en el día de hoy para ganarle? Entrenamiento, me entrené mucho. Más de dos meses y medio de preparación junto a mi equipo. Un laburo fuerte. A lot of preparation with his team. Two and a half months for preparation for this fight, and that I think was the difference. Are you the best 140 pounder in the world? ¿Tú eres el mejor 140 libra en el mundo? Ahora me doy cuenta que sí. Sé que soy el mejor 140 porque Pearson, Pearson, Pearson es un buen boxeador. Nadie nunca lo ha podido dominar así, ganarle así. Ahora sí sé que soy el mejor 140. Now he knows he's the best 140 pounds because nobody has ever dominated Peterson the way he did today. Do you want to fight Danny Garcia next? ¿Quiere pelear a Danny Garcia? ¿Quiere pelear con él? Sí, seguro. Por eso estoy agradecido a Golden Boy y a y a Al Heyman que me van a conseguir esa pelea y yo sé que va a ser así. They know that a Golden Boy and Al Heyman are going to get him that fight and he's ready for that fight. He wants to fight him. Did you feel as though after what happened against Alexander and Judah that you could not afford not to knock a guy out? In other words, you could not afford to have a decision this evening? Tú con lo que pasó con Alexander y Judah, tú piensas que no esto no podía ir a decisión, que lo tenía que noquear. No, sí, seguro. Eh, esas fueron experiencias muy buenas. La verdad que le agradezco que me hayan dado derrota porque me hicieron abrir mucho la cabeza y por eso de, de, de ahí en adelante empecé a noquear. He kind of, uh, those two losses, he kind of is grateful for them because now he knows that he has to win by a knockout like they did today. Lucas, congratulations. It was fun to watch. Felicidades fue un servicio. Muchas gracias. Dejamos mandar un saludo a toda Argentina que debe estar re contento a mi hija que la amo, a mi familia. Eh, a Junín, a Trelevo, las mil viviendas, a toda la gente de Junín, a todos los pibes de gimnasio que me acompañaron muchísimo. Grateful, especially for his daughter, everybody in Argentina who was seeing this fight, and all the Latins that were seeing the fight. Aguanta Argentina, la concha de su madre, vamos. All right, congratulations. Let's go back to Brian Kenny at the desk.